begin this half hour with a Today exclusive. Raffaele Selecito, the former boyfriend of Amanda Knox, speaking out. We will talk to him in a moment, but first, his story. In the saga of Amanda Knox, Solicito is perhaps best known from this image, kissing Knox outside the apartment where Meredith Kircher was brutally murdered just one day before. That was six years ago. Knox and her boyfriend of just seven days, Raffaele Solicito, were convicted of the murder. Both were sentenced to prison. Solicito had several opportunities to abandon Knox and cut a deal, but he never did, despite the fact that he barely knew her. After serving four years in prison, an appeals court overturned their convictions because of insufficient evidence. But two months ago, Italy's highest court overturned that decision and ordered a new trial to begin within the next year. Raffaele Solicito is with us exclusively. His book is called Honor Bound, My Journey to Hell and Back with Amanda Knox. Raffaele, good morning. It's good, good morning to see to you. you. I don't have to tell you, most recently, the Italian Supreme Court overturned your acquittal, which means you are once again facing this process all over again. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm all, me and all my family, we were, are all disappointed for this decision because we don't understand the reason why. And, but we, will, we are confident because we know that so everybody know that we are, I'm innocent and uh, we got evidence of our innocence so we will fight until the end without any worry. You spent all those years in jail. Do you fear that you could be convicted and sent to prison again? No, it's, it's something like a very, um, a very far away thought in my mind because uh, I already know that I'm innocent and we already uh, have proved it. So for me, it's kind of uh, nonsense. What strikes me about your story is that you knew Amanda Knox just seven days when all of this happened. And there was enormous pressure on you to implicate her, to point the finger at her, mm -hmm. and you didn't. Yeah, uh, it, it was... Um, uh, quite normal to me, like uh, getting uh, the facts as serious as they were. So I had to be very serious, not playing a game with, with some people who wanted this game to, uh, to be played. Did you ever think to yourself, why am I standing by this girl I barely know? Yeah, exactly, but it, it, was, it was normal because I cannot throw a 20 years innocent girl for just um, giving me the opportunity to live my life because I, will, I wouldn't ever, ever live a life like that. Has she ever expressed gratitude to you? Yeah, yeah. She, she told me that she, she thinks that I'm a kind of hero, but I don't feel so. And it's, um, it, I, I don't need any kind of, uh, um, uh, any kind of gratitude. It's just like, I did it because I know it's the truth, it's the good thing to do, it's only the only way for me. There were some strange incidents and you write in your book about thinking that some of her behavior was odd. Did you ever doubt her? No, her behavior doesn't match with the facts. The real facts are that we are innocent. There's no anything, nothing in, inside the murder scene uh, that links us to the, to the murder. What's your relationship with Amanda Knox like now? I understand you visited her in Seattle. Yeah, we are friends. We are good friends and we, we have to uh, fight again, so we are kind of... Uh, talking about how to move, how to um, deal with this uh, this new trial, and what we can expect. Is it difficult because there are people, particularly as I understand it, in Italy, your home country, who still wonder if Amanda and maybe even you had something to do with Meredith's murder? Is it hard to live under that kind of yeah, suspicion? Yeah, because the problem is that the media try to find the sensationalism. They don't, they don't try to explain the truth about the case. They don't make the facts, the, the facts straight on record. They just try to uh, grab people's attention. It's been expected that Amanda Knox will not return to Italy for this next phase this new trial. Will you be in Italy for that trial? Well, I will be back. I will organize everything with my lawyers 
and um, just um, um, discussing about the time in which it's uh, good that I, I will be back. Before I let you go, do you have faith in the Italian justice system? Uh, faith, yeah, I have faith in God. The, the, the Italian justice system is something like uh, you don't know what to expect. Well, Rafael Salicito, it's nice to have you here in person. Thank you for coming here and sharing your story. We appreciate it. Thanks. It's, thanks for giving me this opportunity.